as 2018 coming to an end, it was an exciting year. And of course, we're all looking forward to 2019. I wanted to talk about, uh, you know, how, how was it for everyone? And I can't think of a better person to talk to as Tom, the friend of the show, and is also a writer for Inside EVs. Uh, he's an insider, uh, electric, you know, industry insider, and many, many other amazing things that he does for this community for almost God knows how many years. He's been on the show before because he was hanging out with me at CES China. Um, and the video that I'm going to show you, we actually taped that uh, during the LA Auto Show a couple of weeks ago. Um, so his interview is coming up next. Welcome to E4 Electric, your number one source of unbiased electric car news. If this is your first time here, go ahead and click on the subscribe button down there so you don't miss anything moving forward. All right, so me and Tom, we were actually hanging out by the Rivian booth uh, at the LA Auto Show. And again, Tom is like, as, as, like he is extremely educated and uh, on, on electric car movement, he's got a great history. So his opinion is probably one of the most rounded and educated opinions you can get. Um, we talked about what happened in 2018, uh, you know, looking forward to 2019. His answers actually surprised me. And a lot of times when he does say something that surprised me, I, I go like, you know, he knows probably something I don't. I'm, I'm gonna give it another thought. Um, and a lot of times he ends up being right. So, and that's why it's so awesome. I'm, I'm looking forward, I'm just, I can't wait to show you guys this interview. Before that, let me just pay my bills. And this is pretty much the last time, you know, uh, we're doing climate exchange sponsorship because their raffle is happening only in a few more days. After that, there will be nothing to advertise, but um, there are la raffling off three brand new Teslas. No more than 4,000 tickets are being sold. So even at $250 a ticket, your chances are pretty damn good. Uh, there's a link in the description of this video so you can buy one for yourself or two or three or as a gift or whatever. Uh, it's a great it's it's a you know great chance to win a car, but even if you don't, don't forget, you're still doing a good deed by contributing to a nonprofit organization that's moving all of us towards a low carbon economy so thank you for to climate exchange for sponsoring us for three months all right without further ado this is my interview with tom at the la auto show we're in the middle of la auto show and with every show we see more and more exciting news for electric cars so what have you seen so far and i think we've seen everything at this point uh, that's the most exciting and what do you think is maybe the most disappointing yeah. well so it's no surprise most exciting is is right behind us you know rivian really seemed to uh capture the imagination of the show this year as far as uh, electric vehicles are concerned you know we we we've been asking for variety with electric vehicles you know we've had all of these small hatchbacks these hundred mile cars and people are saying well we need suvs we need pickups we need diversity you know to to fill the needs of what what customers want to buy today rivian brought both of them here not just one they have this all electric pickup truck with up to 400 mile range and they've got this really cool uh range rover-esque uh SUV over there that seats up to seven again uh, has up to 180 kilowatt hour massive battery pack these vehicles have tons of storage space uh, gobs of torque you zero to 60 in three seconds something crazy like that not that you know I mean it's fun but you, you really don't need that for a pickup truck but in any event um, the torque is what's really cool for the pickup truck uh, you know it's got tremendous amount of, uh, of torque so uh, I mean these these vehicles if, if Rivian can pull this off and get them to market as they're promising they're gonna sell every one they can make you know even at that relatively high price point of you know around before incentives I think it starts at around 70,000 71,000 uh, after incentives it's somewhere around 62 but um, people will buy these I mean I, I, I'm considering putting the thousand dollar deposit down and actually reserving one myself so um, you know that I think Rivian really was the the surprise the, the best of show if you want to say for electric vehicles do you think there will be Tesla as you know I mean I know there's a couple more years to the market do, you know whatever Tesla is gonna come up with with their truck do you think they'll be able to compete do you think they made it to the point where you know whenever Tesla comes out it's, it's gonna be pretty even or even better yeah, that's a good question it, it, the timing is going to be everything. You know, if, if Tesla were to be able to bring a pickup truck to market before Rivian, I think that would really um, damage them. Uh, I'm not saying it would kill them, but it, it would definitely damage them because Tesla's already built up that cachet. People trust them. You know, people love them. Uh, and Rivian has yet to prove that. So um, 
you know, I, I think if, if Tesla were to somehow fast track a pickup truck or if they were to have significant delays to where it didn't come to market until Tesla had a pickup truck, then I think that that might spell some trouble. But it doesn't appear like that's going to be the case. I, I don't think Tesla is going to have a pickup truck to market for at least another four or five years. And um, really, you think that long? I don't, I, yeah, well, they have to they have to launch the Y. You know, and, 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 and you know, we, we know Tesla, while they're making really exciting, great cars, they have trouble launching cars. They're always delayed. They always take maybe a year before they get to full pr production. You know, only recently did Tesla hit the their manufacturing numbers on the three that they were predicting that have last last December, this time last year. So, you know, if, if you use Tesla time, uh, they're not going to bring an electric truck to the to, to market in, in volume until at least four or five years. So if, if they can do this on schedule, or even if they're a little behind schedule, they're, they're saying a, a late 2020, I think, launch. You know, if they can be, you know, within six months to a year of that, I think they'll be first to market. And I think, uh, I think they'll do well if they can do that. Okay, so what's the most maybe disappointing uh, thing that you've seen so far? Well, it's what I didn't see is what's disappointing. I really had hoped Nissan would come out and uh, show us the uh, 60 kilowatt hour leaf, give us specs on that. You know, we knew kind of ahead of the show that that wasn't going to happen, but it's still a little stinging to come to an auto show and to go to the Nissan booth and really have nothing. So, uh, you know, I think they dropped the ball on that. I know they're going through some uh, issues with uh, Carlos Ghosn and uh, but I don't, I, I, you know, they're a big company, they're big people, they, they, they can do two things at once. You know, their they're, they're reasoning for delaying the launch of the 60 kilowatt hour leaf was because, you know, they're, they're firing their CEO. I, I, I just don't understand that. I think that's a really lame excuse. And uh, I think they were trying to uh, avoid the people like us asking them about that rather than the Nissan <laughs> leaf. Well, you know, if they gave us something to be excited about, we would be asking them about the car. I, with with that vacuum now that I think they're going to get more questions. So if, if that was their strategy, I don't think it would work. I agree. Okay, well, let's move on to sort of maybe a broader topic because, you know, it's almost December. Is it December? I don't know why I'm watching, looking at my oh, watch. Right. right, but we're at the no, end of, <laughs> we're at the, end of the year. All right. I see Christmas trees around is what <laughs> I'm saying. So, you know, this was supposed to be a breakout year for electric cars. So my question is kind of a, you know, twofold is like, one, do you think this was the year that really, you know, electric cars have broken out or it's yet to come? And then give me your, you know, uh, um, most surprising and most disappointing um, event unveiling fact that you've seen this year so far. Okay, well, you know, I, I never personally thought that 2018 was going to be a breakout year. You know, I, th I, I always viewed it as kind of the beginning. Um, and, and to me, the beginning was when Jaguar brought out the I-Pace because, uh, you know, for the first time, a luxury brand other than Tesla, you know, an established lu luxury brand came out with a long range, sexy, competitive, you know, perf high performance, SU, you know, crossover. And uh, so to, to me, that was like, OK, now it's on. You know, and now they're going to be followed by Audi brought out the, the e-tron. That's going to be launching, you know, in a few months, um, maybe, uh, you know, a year later. Uh, B BMW is going to bring out their iX3 crossover. The Mercedes is going to have the um, uh, MQC or M. BC, I forget. EQC. The, EQC. I, you know, I, I can't keep up with all these uh, numbers. Nobody can. And Volkswagen with the ID Buzz and the ID Cross, in any event. Nobody wants to spell anymore. Uh, I tell you, it's, it's, it gets confusing. But, um, you know, I, I really think that once we start getting a lot of these um, crossovers, these long range, uh, the vehicles I just mentioned, I think that's really when we're going to really start to see the breakout because that's what people are asking for. You know, there's a reason why Ford and, and now Chevy, unfortunately, is decided to stop making most of their sedans or all their sedans. It's because people are looking for crossovers, people are looking for SUVs, and, and we didn't have any electric options. Uh, so now that they're going to be introduced to the market in the next few years, I think that's when we start getting a good amount of those, that's when I, I think we're, we're breaking out. So, uh, all right. Um, I, 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 I mean, I agree. I, I, I was a little bit more optimistic, but obviously you were more realistic. Um, what's the, uh, what's the big? Well, actually, let me pick up on something you said earlier. Now, people are still struggling with how big of a range an electric car needs to have for them to be comfortable. 
that doesn't have to be reasonable just for them to be comfortable. Now there's two, you know, kind of uh, uh, a school of thoughts, right? One is enough for the entire day once you charge after that. But some people say, well, I want us to be uh, for the entire day trip, yeah. right? So that would be essentially, you know, talking about 200 mile range or 600 or 700 mile range. Where do you sit on that? Where do you think that that, that magic number is in, in terms of uh, going on one charge so many miles? Well, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that, and uh, and we didn't set this up. <laughs> but we I, spent three but, days hanging out together. We, we did not talk about it. up oh, because I just finished or uh, uh, talking to a BMW product manager and a Volkswagen product manager about range, and um, you know they both asked my opinions on what I thought about it and gave their opinions, and we had nice conversations. And basically, what they both said was, look. We, we understand people have range anxiety. We understand that there's this transition to electric cars. A lot of people are, are very concerned about it so that they won't make that step until they have something that maybe does more than what they, they, they even possibly could need. So they're 200, 300, 400 miles, even though they know they only really need 50 miles. Um, so what, what, what I think both of these product managers told me was, look, we feel that we have to come out strong with something um, that has a lot of range. You know, BMW is talking about when they start bringing out their, their, their next wave of, of electric vehicles that they're going to have 300, 400 miles of range. But, but then they said that we actually believe we're going to regress after three, four, five years later, that the sweet spot is going to be around 200 to 225 miles, but that they have to come out with these long-range vehicles just so people buy into it. And then after they own them for a couple of years, they say, you know what, I really don't need 400 miles of range. 200 is fine, and by then the infrastructure is going to be more robust. So if you take a 200-mile electric vehicle and you have, you know, um, ubiquitous DC fast charge stations and, uh, you know, at high charge rates, 150, 200 kilowatts. You know, you're talking about a, a 10 minute stop to throw another 150 miles of range back in. So now even the, the, the long range road trips, you can do with a 200 to 225 mile EV, you know, nearly seamlessly. So um, as far as the range goes, I kind of think we're going to see these like crazy high ranges. And then in the long run, that's going to pull back because it's going to allow the vehicles to be less expensive with a smaller battery, lighter, so they'll be more efficient. I have to say, I have never thought about that way, but I, I, I have a feeling you're right. Uh, people do want to be over convinced at first, and then reality hits, and they go, I don't really need that much. Okay. Uh, all right, so back to, back to this year. Uh, biggest surprise, uh, biggest disappointment. Okay, well, we talked about the biggest surprise was... I'm of the year. I'm well, I'm, uh, we're still in 2018, and I'm really surprised that Rivian came out with so two vehicles, not just one, two, that are so compelling. You know, um, both of these vehicles, uh, I could see myself in, in either one of these vehicles. And they fill a niche that isn't currently filled. I was trying to see uh, myself in one of those vehicles, but they call security. They don't want anybody inside. <laughs> you know. Well, you're always breaking the rules. We know that. That is true. <laughs> we won't talk about when we snuck in uh, before the show opened. No. <laughs> <laughs> I did post it on, uh, I think I already posted on uh, Instagram. <laughs> Follow me on Instagram, me for electric, for all kinds of breaking videos. Yeah. So, okay. So, you know, the, um, uh, surprise, you know, positive surprises that, you know, disappointments, you know, I'd probably either have to go with Nissan or even BMW. Um, you know, BMW seems to have slow tracked uh, their EV program. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're definitely pulled back and said, you know what, we're going to be all in with EVs, but, you know, we're, we're really not going to be all in until 2020, 2021. Um, but if their product planning holds, once 2020 hits, you're just going to see one after another after another. They're going to have 25 electric vehicles by 2025. So between 2020 and 2025, virtually every couple months they're going to be introducing a new a new electric car. But, you know, uh, we want that sooner. You know, I want that now. I, I, I want the iX3 this year. I want the i4, you know, in 2019 or 2020. But, you know, it's going to come 2021. So um, with, with Audi just uh, showing off their, uh, you know, e-tron GT, you know, that's, that's barking right up BMW's alley. That should have been the BMW i4. BMW kind of jumped out ahead of everybody seven or eight years ago, and they really went in with, with e-mobility. They've since pulled back. If they would have stayed that course, the, the i4 would have been launching probably this year. It would have looked like the Audi GT. It would have been this high performance Tesla Model S competitor. Instead, we've got to wait three years for it. 
who knows what the market's going to look like in three years. You know, it's, we'll see if that's a strategy that, uh, that was a wise one for BMW. All right, so let's move on to the future. Uh, you know, 2019 is just about the, around the corner. Well, I'm going to make that question a little more complicated. Do you think that year would be the breakout year for, for electric cars? And what would be your predictions or maybe just hopes uh, in terms of what do you want to see uh, happen next year uh, with electric car uh, universe and, and, and the revolution, really? Okay, so no, I, I don't think 2019 is going to be a breakout year. I think we're going to see sales increase. I think more people are going to get into electric vehicles. I think, you know, we're, we, they're going to become more mainstream. But I, I, you know, now that we kind of see what some of the big boys are doing, like a BMW, like a Volkswagen, um, we see that their product planning shows that we're not going to really start to get a lot of their EVs until 2020, 2021. So, you know, in my, my, I'm still going to stick with that time frame, 2020, 2021, where we're really going to see this seismic shift and, and, and a lot of people consider EVs that we hadn't, that wouldn't previously. All right. What are your hopes? What are, what are the things that you want to see next year? Okay, what I want to see is, and, and I'm long range Nissan, I, 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 right. No, well, that's one thing that's going to come. No, I'm going to talk directly to Hyundai. So, um, Hyundai needs to up their production. The, the Kona Electric is a great EV. I, 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 I've, I've had a chance to drive it. It's an it's a absolute winner. Uh, it drives great. It's got 258 plus miles of range. Um, and the problem is they're going to bring it to California. Then they're going to bring it to the nine other ZEV states a few months later. And there's no guarantee if they're going to make it available for the rest of the country. Now, Hyundai has said that anybody in any state will be able to go to the dealership and order one. But at that point, it's a, it's a done sale. You've got to put your deposit down, no turning back. So it's kind of like sight unseen. So people that live in, you know, uh, you know, uh, uh, the middle America or, or one of those non Zev states that want one has to go to their dealership, commit to a purchase without ever really driving it. Um, I'd, I'd love to see Hyundai figure out a way to up their, their production numbers um, and just bring as many of those here to the states as as the demand is because i mean i i think if there was a if they could supply them i think hyundai would sell 25 to thirty-five thousand a year of them here easy yeah it's it's a great it's a great car it's just it's a shame they're not going to bring enough of them no uh, actually now that they brought, brought uh, hyundai kona um, i mean we're literally looking at the the new uh, soul ev and obviously they they, they have the uh, uh, e-nero nero ev however they want us to call it which is pretty much the sister brand sister cars with very similar range and a price tag um which one would 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 you prefer uh, you know if, if you would put them you know next to each other yeah. which one do you think because to me they're almost pretty much similar or almost identical yeah well uh, i wouldn't say pretty much similar i think the powertrains are they they all have the three vehicles have that 64 kilowatt hour battery pack two i think they all have the same 201 horsepower uh motor um but for me personally the form of the kona electric suits me best um you know it's it's what i need i don't have kids i'm married with no kids so i don't have i don't need a lot of space um uh, i need uh, i prefer hatchbacks uh but the um the 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 soul uh, is a little bit of a surprise because I, I was kind of expecting them to use the 39 kilowatt hour battery pack. Uh, and now that they are, you know, committed to the, the larger one, the 64, it's going to have great range. Um, and, and, you know, I know I have a lot of friends that, that own Soul EVs, the current iteration, and they love the car. And um, they're going to love it even more with, with double the range. So, uh, you know, I think, I, th I think Kia did a good job with that. But again, like Hyundai, um, they're not going to bring enough here. They're going to only sell them in the Zev states. It's basically a compliance car. Um, and it's unfortunate because these are good EVs, long range, good EVs. They, they need to bring more of them. And I just interviewed their rep yesterday, Steve. He's been on my show before, and I did ask him that question. I mean, they, even though I, I, I told them ahead of time, hey, guys, I'm going to ask you a tough question, and they, they said, go ahead. Um, I'm, I'm happy they answered it. I'm not really sure, and you guys are just going to have to wait for that video in, in, in the next week or so, but um, I'm not really sure if I'm satisfied with the answer. So, But you're right. I, I, I mean, the, when they make these great cars, they need to kind of sell them because that's the whole point. Yeah, well, is it the point? I mean, it, it sounds like that's the point. We would expect that, but maybe the point is compliance. Maybe the point is, look, we need to have uh, 10,000 zero emission vehicles in the U.S. so we could sell the rest of our product lineup. And uh, so that's what we're going to make. We're going to make 10,000 and then we're going to cut bait. So, you know, uh, you know, it's, it, you, you and I look at it as a war car manufacturer. Jesus, why wouldn't we want to sell as many of these as we can? 
but uh, you know, strategically, that might not really be the plan for, for for some companies. Some companies might just be making the minimum. Well, we know they are some companies just making the minimum amount to to satisfy compliance, and then so they could sell the rest of their gassers. All right. Well, listen, I am excited about the next year. Um, I, I, I kind of agree with you. It's probably not going to be the breakout year. I'm kind of rolling back now that, now that I'm kind of thinking about it. But it is going to be another exciting year, I think. Absolutely. And we'll have to circle back here next year at the LA Auto Show and talk about what happened over the course of the next 12 months. A, a lot of wise words from a wise man in uh, this industry. It's always a pleasure to talk to Tom. Let me know what your thoughts are about, uh, you know, his estimation, what what the 2018 brought to us and what to expect from 2019. Um, I'm really excited about 2019. Uh, I will be at CES bringing you more exciting news just in a few more days. So follow me. Uh, and until then, see you guys next time. And remember to stay charged.